Hey, this is Rodney at the Raw Shop, and in this video, we're going to be looking on how to diagnose a clogged exhaust system. There's a lot of videos and, and posts and stuff and stuff in forums on how to diagnose a clogged exhaust system, and I'm going to tell you, most of them are too complicated, uh, especially if you're a, a new do-it-yourself mechanic. I mean, even if you're just a home mechanic. I mean, a lot of them, a lot of these videos, these guys have got, you know, anywhere from $500 to $10,000 scanners and they're, you know, doing the graphs and they're measuring all these things and stuff that, you know, if, I mean, I've been doing this for years and half this stuff still doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, I do understand it, but I mean, it's just overly complicated. And I'm going to tell you, an OBD2 scanner of any type is not going to say, hey, I got a clogged exhaust system. If your car is not giving you some type of a code, and that's usually what ends up happening on clogged exhaust systems, it won't give you a code, you're not really sure what's going on. There's other videos which isn't a really a bad thing is where you can actually go and use a, a vacuum pressure gauge. And, and what I'm talking about is a, it's a gauge that'll check pressure on like a mechanical fuel pump like on the old carburetor styles where you don't really produce more than 15 pounds, maybe 20 pounds tops of uh, fuel pressure, use about 15. But you take those old gauges and you can hook up little adapters to your O2 sensors on your exhaust system. And plug onto them and you can see what the back pressure is. And the back pressure if it idle and stuff, shouldn't be more than one pound of pressure. Uh, if you run up to about 2,500 RPM, at the most it should be three. Uh, but really a good flowing exhaust system won't even probably have a half a pound, even at 2,500 RPM. But, and that can be misleading, because if you're trying to hook into where O2 sensor ports are, it may be clogged before that or after that, and it's not gonna actually help you pin it down. Muffler shops will actually drill holes into the into the um, exhaust pipe at different points, trying to pinpoint where the where the clogged part of the exhaust system is. But then you've got to weld those up or patch them up if you want to. Plus, you're going to have to connect, make some type of an adapter to the holes you drill. So if you don't have a lift and you're trying to do this on your back out on the driveway, I mean, you got the danger of being underneath a jacked up car and you know your face is right up against the exhaust system. So that's kind of hard to do as well. Another method, which also is a, it's a decent method, is you can take an infrared laser thermometer and and point to the exhaust system at different points. Like the temperatures on your catalytic converter should be around 500 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Now they can range up to 1200 and still be working properly because it again depends on the vehicle, uh, how big the engine is, how small the exhaust system is. This can play factors on the temperatures, but overall you, your catalytic converter, let's just say, shouldn't be more than a thousand degrees at an idle after it's been fully warmed up. So, and you don't really, you can aim your uh, thermometer at the actual component but it's usually got shielding stuff, so it's better to aim it at the weld points. In other words, if your exhaust comes down from the engine, it'll have a weld point, like a weld ring, where they've welded the catalytic converter into the system. Aim your laser at, at that points. The, you know, aim it before and aim it after, and that way you can get a better reading of the temperatures. Now, if you're getting more than 20 degrees variance between the beginning in the end, let's say if you're getting 50 to 100 degrees temperature difference, then you, you have a, a clogged system. In other words, it may be uh, 1,000 degrees before the catalytic converter, or maybe uh, 800, you know, 900 degrees on after. That's probably telling you the, the uh, catalytic converter's clogged. And usually on exhaust system, it's the catalytic converter more than it's the muffler. Those methods, you know, laser, checking for back pressure. You can put. A, you can also hook up a, a gauge. To, if some uh, EGR systems have a tube, a small little tube, or, that you can tie your uh, pressure gauge onto and see what the back pressure is. And all these things are fine. I mean, and you can do some with your scanner, 
But if you really want to know how to actually test for clogged exhaust systems, use a vacuum gauge. Find your point to hook a vacuum to the engine to. In most cases, uh, newer cars now, <clears throat> they do not think that you ever need to work on them and stuff, so they don't ever leave you a vacuum port to hook to. So you usually have to just take the line loose that goes to the brake booster and adapt it over to a T or, you know, just sort of trail it down, you know, tee it down to something smaller, but hook your vacuum gauge to that and then read the vacuum. Most engines run around 18 to 21 inches of vacuum. If they're, if they're very good running engines, there's nothing wrong with them, they'll run around 18 to 21. <clears throat> so when you start it, it may pull it, but if, the, if the, you see the needle start dropping excessively down to five or down to zero, that means you've got back pressure in the exhaust system backing back up in the engine. And of course that it suffocates it and won't allow it to pull in vacuum. So it can't pull a vacuum when the exhaust is clogged. Plus, the needle, and if the needle is shaking and just going crazy, it, you know, and you, if you start listening, sometimes you listen to the engine, you can hear how it doesn't really, it's not firing correctly, and it's kind of almost sound like pre ignition or just rattling a little bit. Those are good signs right there that it's clogged, but a vacuum gauge is your best bet on looking for a clogged exhaust system. I was looking up for the best place to hook up my vacuum gauge to that was easy to get to. You've got the one right here that runs onto the, the brake booster. So, it's real simple, not that hard. Just pull the clamp back. Pull it up. Using a vacuum tee that's, I think, 3 8 and it comes down to a little 5 16 uh, fitting. I put a cap on it. I just took my hose, and there. And all I gotta do is hook my vacuum gauge to this line right here, and then we can test the vacuum on it. We're gonna check the vacuum uh, with the with the open and see if it does better than it did. That's with the exhaust system hooked up. <clears throat> it's still clogged. <clears throat> Without it, it pulls around 18 inches of vacuum. And it hooked up. It doesn't, uh, it can't even pull that. And it's, it's been dropping as I've been letting it idle. It won't even run. In my opinion, it'd be probably cheaper to go to a muffler shop and they could probably put you in for one, you know, a universal one for maybe 150, something like that. You'd have to just call around and check, but legally they cannot cut a catalytic converter out of a car. So we did. Now, just removed it and put in a, a, a $30 pipe right there, flex pipe, so because it makes a kind of a curve to fit correctly.
your exhaust, lots of vacuum. Steady needle. Okay, I wanted to go over some signs of a uh, clogged exhaust system. If you've noticed your car has poor performance, it doesn't just seem to have the get up and go like it used to, or just notice it seems to drag. If it bogs or stalls out, in other words, quits running, or runs for a while when it gets hot, then it quits running. Uh, poor gas mileage. It doesn't seem to rev up. In other words, it revs up real slow when, you, when you're in neutral or park and try to rev it up. If your transmission doesn't seem to shift correctly, in other words, if it... If it doesn't seem to shift at the correct points or if you have one of those stupid CVT transmissions where it just those those CVT transmissions constant velocity transmissions will do all sorts of funky things if the engine isn't running correctly if you have the smell of sulfur or rotten eggs is really strong then if uh, there seems like an excessive heat coming out from underneath the car in other words like if you park your car and you get out it just seems like the underside of the car is radiating a lot more heat than normal these are signs that you have a clogged exhaust system and should pay attention to it So you'll see in this video how the vacuum gauge is one of the best indicators if you have a clogged exhaust system or not. I'll put a link down in the description for vacuum gauges and stuff like that for the tools I used on doing this. There's not a whole lot to it. So if you have any uh, experience with this or any suggestions or any tricks that you've learned, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know. Let others know. I mean, it's helpful for you know all of us to share information. So leave me a comment. Tell me what you know what, what's going on with you and your and your vehicles. Also, if you're new to being a, a do-it-yourself mechanic and you'd like to learn more, <clears throat> look down in the description. I've got a link down there for a, an automotive course that's actually a really good course that teaches you everything from engines to every to water pumps to pretty much everything. So. If you want to learn how to work in cars, this is a great course to take. It's, it's inexpensive. It's better than trying to go to uh, college and take a class there for thousands of dollars. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, be sure to like and subscribe. And always check back because I'm always working on something crazy. See you in the next one.